So why should we all be mad about Common Core math standards? My answer might surprise you, but first let's start with what prompted me to create this video. The photo on the left appeared in our Facebook feed one day, and after reading the comments, I decided to create the mathematical response on the right. When I did, I got this comment, and I thought, really? Crossing out and borrowing all of those numbers is the only way you understand? But I guess nine years ago, I would have been in the same boat, and that is why Common Core Math makes me mad, and why it should make you mad too. When you see a problem like 199 plus 257, and the only way you can solve that problem is to line up the numbers and use this algorithm that we were taught in school, then you should be mad. But what you should be mad about is the fact that you never learned to be flexible with numbers. You should be mad that you were never taught to think about math. You were taught to follow the procedures and rules and never question why or how they work. Common Core Math is trying to help kids think about and understand math, not just do procedures. So that on this problem, they can look at it and see that if they were to take one away from the 257 and move it over with the 199, that problem becomes much easier. But before kids are able to do that, teachers in the early grades are helping kids see that when they have 9 plus 7, they could do the same thing by just moving 1 from the 7 over with the 9 to make a nicer problem. So, as kids progress through school, it then helps them when they have to solve problems like this. So they can take the two hundredths and move it over with the three and ninety-eight hundredths to create four, and then they've got the thirty-four hundredths left. If you were like I used to be, and the only way you can solve subtraction problems is to line numbers up and do all the borrowing, then you should be mad because the way that you learn can be cumbersome and confusing, especially when we're subtracting across zeros like in this problem. You should be mad that you never learned to use addition to help you subtract, and that is what Common Core is trying to help kids understand, that on some problems, it's nice to use the relationship between addition and subtraction so that you can solve problems like this by just doing plus two gets me to 900, plus another 100 gets me to the 1,000. This is what the Facebook photo calls the new way, which really isn't new. It used to be known as the cashier's algorithm because that was how cashiers figured out how much change to give back to customers. But of course, we can't just start right there. So yes, teachers in the early grades are helping kids understand how to use addition to solve what some people see as simple subtraction problems. But we do this early on so that later, kids can understand how much change they should receive for a $17.68 purchase when they give the cashier 20 bucks. Now, of course, we wouldn't use this strategy if the numbers were really far apart. Like if we were subtracting 98 minus 6. I'm not going to start at the 6 and add up to the 98. But I would if it was 98 minus 79. And that's what Common Core is trying to build, flexible mathematicians who can decide how they want to solve problems instead of only knowing the algorithm. So how flexible are you when you are at a restaurant and it costs $5.95 for the lunch special and everyone in your family of four orders it? Do you line it up like this and do the algorithm? Or do you instead think, hmm, that's almost $6 per person, so I'm going to do 6 times 4, which is 24, but that was 5 cents too much per person, so I have to take off 20 cents. Then how about if you were figuring out the 15% tip? Do you line it up and do the algorithm like this? All the way ignoring the decimal, which makes you ignore the values of the numbers, and then in the end, you have to try to remember the rule about where to put that decimal. Or... Do you instead break it up and find 10% of that amount that you need to leave a tip for and then figure out 5% because you know 5% is just going to be half of what the 10% was 
and then you put those together. If you have these alternative strategies when you are doing math problems, then you've been doing Common Core math before it was called Common Core. You were the kid who would do it one way in your head, but then on paper that you turned into your teacher, you wrote it the way your teacher has been teaching it because everyone had to show it the same way or else it was marked wrong, even if you had the right answer. But now with Common Core, teachers are being asked to have all kids be able to think about math in these flexible ways instead of just those quote-unquote mathy kids who got the so-called math gene. There is no such thing as a math gene. Everyone can learn to think about mathematics instead of just following procedures blindly. But it takes work to retrain our brains that have had over 30 years of only doing algorithms. But for kids who haven't been programmed to think only the algorithmic way, it is easier. It's just hard for the adults in their lives to comprehend it. So yes, you should be mad about Common Core Math because it is showing all of us who thought we were good at following the rules and procedures of math that we really know nothing about mathematics. Common Core has brought to the surface our lack of thinking skills and our inability to solve real problems not just contrived tasks out of a textbook that we all solve the same way the teacher asked us to. So when we see problems that kids are bringing home now and the quote weird ways that kids are being asked to solve them, don't get mad at the teachers. Don't get mad at Common Core. Get mad at the fact that you were only taught one way to think and that you can't get outside that box of the algorithm. And that you were never given these opportunities that kids these days are getting. So go in and talk to the teachers if you're frustrated. And if you are a teacher, ask your administration to invest in good professional development that builds your understanding of math, not just how you're supposed to teach it. Then hopefully you can become a recovering traditionalist like me someone who can think flexibly and can do math quickly in my head without relying on paper and pencil to be able to do an algorithm.